laws or commandments on them so as to bring them back into the worshiping the true living God, Jehovah. The law was just a temporary measure to prepare them for the grace that was to come by faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. As we read in Galatians 3, 23 to 29. But the scripture had concluded all on that sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up under the, unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ, that is neither Jew nor Greek, nor white, nor black, nor Nigerian, nor Haitian. There's neither bond nor free. There's neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Amen. And as ye be in Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed, and he is according to the promise. And Hebrew 10, 1 reads, For the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never, never be those sacrifices which have offered year by year continually make the, make the commas their own too perfect. The concept of grace, that is God's active involvement on behalf of his people, receives a sharper focus in the New Testament. Divine grace, becomes embodied in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus demonstrates visibly the dynamic nature of God's grace. His ministry fulfills the promise of grace for everyone. As we read in the Old Testament, let us see John chapter 1, verses 14 to 17. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The glory as of the only Christ, saying, This was he of whom I spoke. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God's grace revealed in Jesus Christ make it possible for God to forgive sin and to gather sinners into the church, the new covenant community. During his ministry, Jesus repeatedly pronounced the words of forgiveness to a great number of sinners and ministered to a variety of desperate human needs. The parable of the debtors illustrates this better. As we read in Luke 7, 4 to 47, And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he said, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50 pence. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me therefore, which of them will love him most? And Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thy house. Thou gave me no water for my feet, but she had washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Mm -hmm. Thou gave me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, had not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil, thou did not anoint, 
But this woman has anointed my faith with ointment. We are for, I say unto thee, our sins, which are many, are forgiven. Amen. Amen. For she loved much, but to whom little is given, for is forgiven, the same loves little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven thee. Amen. Through teaching, such as the prodigal son, and the search for the lost sheep, Jesus made it clear that he had come to seek and save those who were lost. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, it was his death on the cross that enabled sinners who repent to assess God's forgiving and restorative grace. Yes. And this simple truth is described as the doctrine of justification by faith through grace. Amen. The book of Romans 3 Verse 23 reads, For all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. According to this teaching, Jesus substituted himself for us by dying so that we could be declared not guilty. As a result, repentance believers enter into God's eternal plan of grace, which enables them to participate in purifying work of the Spirit of God. God has hence extended that divine grace to all of us who are ready to surrender ourselves to be considered worthy to receive this divine grace to serve God. We do not have to become a pastor. We do not have to become a deacon or a deaconess. But God has given each individual a gift or a talent which if not used or developed may be taken from us. Some have talents, and when those talents are being misused or denied to God, the talents may be taken away and given to somebody else. Amen. Unfortunately, it is sad that many great artists, dancers, singers, and performing artists who had reached the peak of their career suddenly fell from grace and limelight to the shadow of their image. Some committed suicide yes. through overdose of drugs. Mm -hmm. Some degenerated into pathetic states mm -hmm. where they were only existing as excesses or indulgence in worldly things mm -hmm. as Satan implored to derail them, mm -hmm. like drugs, alcohol, fornication, and many other immoral practices. These are major problems for we parents. No matter how grown up our children may be, we must never give up on them. Amen. Amen. I was still taking instruction from my father, even if after I have had all my six children, I was still their son, which means I was still their child. May their souls rest in perfect peace. Amen. It is very sad. The society in which we now find ourselves we are your own children with whom you have enjoyed a healthy family relationship. We wake up one day and say, I cannot wait till I am 18 years old to be free from your constant chastisement at this age. We cannot prevent them from going out to socialize with their friends. And most of them incidentally are misled by the inglorious virtues of their friends. Teach your children from their youth to have confidence and self-esteem in themselves yes. and they will not end up as copycats and how many of us really care what kind of company what kind of friends our children are keeping do we really care or have time to sit down with them and communicate with them there is this saying that the children of a hard-working mother are always lazy because she could not allow herself to be tied down begging any church to do her household calls. She does them alone while these children are sleeping till late morning. What kind of adolescents do we expect them to showcase as the products of our parenting? Many a times we blame the children trying to exonerate ourselves with flimsy reasons such as I did not bring them him or her up this way. How did you bring them up? 
When you yourself don't even have time for yourself. Once you go out in the morning, you are not back into the house until night, leaving these children to their unlimited freedom. And when they are already used to having all things in their own way, why will they want to respect anybody's advice? This message is not intended for the young parents to learn from the mistakes or pitfalls of their seniors who now rely only on the power of prayers. So Lord Jesus, to touch the hearts of our youth to be able to follow the path of wisdom. From the Holy Bible, we learn a lot of wisdom. If only we have time and interest or willingness to read it. In the book of Ecclesiastes 9, 10, it reads, Whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might, for there is no activity or planning or knowledge or wisdom in grave where you are going. Again, I saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, and the battle is not to the warriors, and neither is bread to the wise, nor wealth to the descending, nor favor to men of ability, for time and chance overtake them all. Yes. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding. Yes. Their predecessors who tried it live the rest of their lives regretting for failing to utilize all the opportunities and positions they will have been had they listened to the word of wisdom. The book of Ecclesiastes, again in 5, 1 to 8, teaches us a lot of wisdom. It reads, Guide your steps as you go to the house of God and draw near to listen rather than to offer the sacrifice of fools. For they know not they are doing evil. Do not be hasty in word or impulsive in thought to bring up a matter in the presence of God. For God is in heaven and you are on the earth. Therefore, let your words be few. Amen. For the dream comes through much effort and the voice of a fool through many words. When you make a vow to God, do not be late in paying it. For he takes no delight in fools. Pay what you vow. It is better that you should not vow and not pay. Do not let your speech cause you to sin. And do not say in the presence of God that it was a mistake. Why should God be angry on the account of your voice and destroy the works of your hands? For in many dreams, and many words, there is emptiness. Rather, fear God. Amen. Every time this word, vow, comes to my mind, and I started wondering, why is my God putting this word into my heart? I woke up, and I checked the true implication and other words used to describe this word, vow which are, one, covenant, two, oath, three, pledge, another one, promise, and lastly, swearing. I know of a covenant that God made a covenant to, with Abraham that he will make him father of many nations Amen. and will give him a land flowing with milk and honey for an inheritance. And I also know that God fulfilled his promise. Yes. I know about oath and swearing because I see it being displayed in court where any witness it is someone to take an oath to speak the truth and nothing but the truth. Because we know that if we break that oath which is perjury in court we may go to a prison we speak the truth. If we make a pledge before a fellow human judge to pay up our debts, we look for that money at all costs to pay up within the time set. But when we now swear before God and make a vow, a promise 
that we enter into a covenant with God out of our free will, without any duress. We feel complacent, we feel unafraid, we feel unperturbed, and not even afraid of God's wrath, and we feel we can withstand His anger. The judgment of God is soon coming on all those who are debtors to God. You know yourselves, I am only a messenger delivering the message I am sent to warn you. Amen. For those who have ears, let them hear. Amen. Genesis 28, 22, 22 said, And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God be with me, I will keep me in this way I go, I will give me bread to eat and raiment to pour on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace. Then shall the Lord be my God, and this stone, which I have set for a pillar, shall be God's house. And of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the ten unto thee. In Genesis 31, 13, here, God is asking for the payment of your vow. God is asking for what belongs to him. And he says, I am the God of Bethel. We are thou anointed the pillar. And we are thou vow unto me. Now arise, get thee out from this land and return unto the land of thy kingdom. Do not deceive yourself. If you think God is not asking you or waiting for you to fulfill your promise, you are not observant. Examine your life and sit down and think, is my life progressing as I would have wanted? Why am I finding it difficult to secure a good job? Why is it difficult for me to make ends meet? That's why the fact that I'm working, earning salary, and yet I am always in debt. Why am I experiencing a cat and mouse relationship? Why am I not enjoying the fruits of a healthy marriage life? where it is supposed to be an ordinance of God. Your life will surely be better. Go and meditate on where you have robbed your God. Do something quick and get back into the courtyard of your Father's blessings. Amen. First Samuel 1, 10 to 11 reads, And she was in bitterness, of soul, and pray unto the Lord, and wept so. And she vowed a vow, and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thy handmaid, but will give unto thy handmaid a man-child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no result come upon his head. How many times? Have you all made a vow or promise to our fellow human beings and we break our promise without any remorse or guilty conscience? We grow up every day of our lives making empty promises that we could no longer be relied upon as we can no longer be irresponsible for our words or promises. We have reached a stage where we don't even know where life end and truth begins. Unfortunately, as a compulsive liar, you become an enemy of your own soul, as your spirit will always rebel against you whenever you tell lies and make empty promises or oath you do not intend to honor. Yes. If your reason is that I do not have, you will never have, because the little you get will be spent in getting out of one trouble or another. And this is the message I am sent to give you. As the Lord has said it in Ecclesiastes 5, when you make a vow to God, do not be late in paying it, for he takes no delight in fools. Pay what you vow. It is better that you should not vow and not pay. Do not let your speech cause you to sin. And do not say in the presence of God that it was a mistake. Why should God be angry on the account of your voice and destroy the works of your hands? My brethren, 
I, I am appealing to all of us this morning to shake off all the garments of hindrances, deceitfulness, unseriousness, faithlessness, and immaturity of the things that are spiritual so that we can be considered worthy of that divine grace which has already been delivered into our church, ready to be allotted to all those or irrespective of our position. But you must make yourself available and worthy for this grace. Amen. Why are we so rebellious? Why are we so unrepentant? When our Lord is within us every day with outstretched hands, waiting to forgive us and receive us into his glory. God's grace bestows on us believers undeserved benefits that enrich our lives and unite us together in the church, the body of Christ. Grace awards us a new status as children of God, members of the household of God, so that we may relate to him as our heavenly Father. Amen. As we read in Galatians 4, 4 to 7. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent for his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that we are under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Because of this, we become a community where race, class, and gender distinctions are irrelevant. We have all become inheritors of God's long ago promise to Abraham, as we also read in Galatians 3. 28-29. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. As ye be, be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed, and he is according to the promise. Amen. 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 The Holy Spirit graciously energizes believers with a variety of spiritual gifts that greatly benefit the body of Christ, which is the church. In Romans 12, 6 to 8, Apostle Paul says, Having then gifts differing accordingly to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith, yes. or ministry, let us wait on our ministry, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorted on exhortation, and he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence, and he that show mercy with cheerfulness. Amen. The choice to receive your grace is yours. The choice to lose the grace you have received is also yours. Yes. And the choice to move on to your next level is also yours. The Church of Christ will continue to perform its role at telling you the truth and helping and putting you back on track. You are the one to make the bold resolution to bounce back on track. Amen. Amen. In eternity, the church will demonstrate by its very existence the immeasurable riches of God's grace in Jesus Christ, as testified in Ephesians 2, 6-9 and have raised up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, and not of work, lest any man should boast. Finally, God's grace manifested in Jesus Christ makes it possible for God to cause believers to reflect His grace in their character and relationships. The conditions 
For receiving God's grace is humility. As we read in James 4, 6-8. But he gives a greater grace. Therefore, it says, God is opposed to the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Submit therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Verse 8 reads, Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. And purify your heart, you double-minded. Yes, glory, glory. What do we achieve from pride, mm. arrogance, glory, glory. and rudeness? Mm. That we now resort to go about with puffed out chest, that we feel we are above correction and elderly advice. God can never be mocked, for he will reward everyone, small or big, rich or poor young or old, according to the works of our hand. The Bible in 1 Peter 5, 5 to 11, gives us these words of admonition. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Ye, all of you, be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisted the proud, and give her grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exhaust you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cared for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walk about, seeking whom he will devour. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, yes. knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren mm -hmm. that are in the world. Mm -hmm. But the God of all grace, who have called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that he has suffered a while, mm -hmm. make you perfect, yes. establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. 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 And such humility before God enables believers to practice humility with other people. From a position of grace, they can set aside selfishness and conceit in order to treat others with an attitude of servanthood. As the Bible revealed to us in Ephesians 5, 21, Submitting yourselves to one another in the fear of God. And in a spirit of forgiveness, Matthew 18, 23 to 35 reads. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew 18, 23 to 35. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he had begun to settle them, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. But since he did not have the means to repay, his law commanded him to be sold along with his wife and children, and all that he had are repayments to be made. So the slave fell to the ground and proceeded before him, saying, have patience with me, and I will repay you everything. And the Lord of that slave felt compassion, 